remember when I was sitting here telling you that I was pregnant? I'd been growing a human. The baby happened. We're never gonna sleep again. Never. I avoid making content on sleep deprivation because it can make people feel bad. Most videos or articles about it are unhelpful and tend to share countless ways that you can just reduce your lifespan. So instead of making you question your mortality, this is my take on new science of how to navigate life, even when your sleep is less than ideal. And because I am just a huge scientist, I've been timing and tracking my daily activities to see if this new research can change how I feel. A big thanks to Samsung Health for sponsoring this video in partnership with Samsung. They can tell me that, wow, I am tired. I'm a sleep scientist who just started a big personal sleep deprivation experiment. And since having a baby, the constant yawning, foggy mind and irritability are real. And if you're watching this, you're probably tired too. The truth is that there are times in our life where sleep deprivation feels unavoidable. <laughs> It feels like you're supposed to build a perfect routine and follow every sleep recommendation, but that's just not realistic. In the blur of my days, I had a single brain cell that remembered some new research out of my university about the timing of our daily activities. It's part of new circadian science that tells us when we should be drinking coffee, napping, and even timing our meals to be less fatigued and manage less than ideal sleep. So instead of focusing on all of the ways that sleep deprivation could lead to my eventual demise, I planned a very basic sleep deprivation daily routine based on this research and wellness tips. So here are the three areas of my daily routine plus my take on the research from one tired person to another. When a lot of people think about coffee, they think about the number of coffees that you have in a day, but what matters more than that potentially is when you have your coffee. I have to say potentially in front of everything because I'm such a researcher. <laughs> I can't state anything to be an actual fact. It's a liability. So it's thought that the best time to drink coffee is mid-morning between 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. because your cortisol levels naturally dip so you can bring in the caffeine to help boost alertness. So having caffeine in the morning actually has more of an impact on your cognitive abilities than caffeine you have in the afternoon. Caffeine that you have in the morning might affect your circadian rhythm by influencing how your brain's internal clock responds to light cues, assuming that you sleep at night and not during the day. Actually, caffeine sticks around in your body way longer than a lot of people think. This review study analyzed 24 different studies that were looking at the effects of caffeine on sleep. And to avoid losing sleep, you should stop drinking caffeine 8.8 .8 hours before you go to bed. So I have my coffee kind of around 9.30 a.m. That ensures that I don't have coffee eight and a half hours before I go to bed again. <laughs> There is a lot of research on naps. Naps have so many benefits. The main ones are that they can boost your mood and memory and alertness, which we all need, particularly me. <laughs> These are three review papers that have a lot of individual studies that they have analyzed. The consensus in general is that the best time to nap is between 1 and 4 p.m. in the afternoon, and the ideal nap length is from 20 to 90 minutes. The idea behind finishing a nap before 4 p.m. or making it less than 90 minutes in duration is that it won't disrupt your nighttime sleep, which is important. From my perspective, there were two really interesting things in this research. One is that habitual nappers have greater benefits from naps. So these benefits are things like short-term memory improvements, general cognitive improvements, and a habitual napper has been defined as someone who naps one or more times a week. The more naps, the better. The second thing is there's this sweet spot for you experiencing these benefits from napping, and that's thought to be between 30 and 120 minutes after your nap. So if you were studying for a test, if you wanted to do some work really quickly, if you were doing anything where you needed to pay a lot of attention, that is a good thing to do in that time after you nap. For me, at the moment, I've been napping at 1 p.m. in the afternoon straight after lunch for 60 minutes. It's beautiful. I haven't had my nap today because we're filming this video, so I could fall asleep at any time. 
So I've been doing this thing that in research is called time-restricted eating. A lot of you might know it as intermittent fasting. And what it means is that you have all of your meals in a shorter period during the day. Typically eight hours. That sounds really intentional and organized, but it was actually because my newborn life is so chaotic. I only have eight hours in the day in which I have time to eat all of my meals. The idea is that your body is only actively metabolizing all of those calories for a shorter period of time. So you have more time for your body to rest and actually sleep. There are links to improved heart health and metabolic function from doing this. Another thing is that earlier dinner times are actually linked to earlier bedtimes and shorter sleep latency, which is the time that it takes you to fall asleep. I actually think I have something about that in my thesis. Um, does everyone keep their thesis in their kitchen? Um, Maybe you should. <laughs> I love it. Let's see your name. Hello. So I have something in here about um, earlier dinner times leading to shorter sleep latency. But look, it's a lot of pages. I can't, I can't quite find it now. But it's in here. So there is some research that shows the short-term benefits of time-restricted eating, which is mainly improved heart health. But then there are some more recent studies that show long-term, maybe it doesn't have as good of a benefit as we first thought on heart health. With any food-related planning, take it with a grain of salt and do what works best for you, first of all. The reality is that holistic health is always the answer. So making sure that you're eating healthy food, you're doing some physical activity, you're sleeping well, and you have healthy habits, and you're kind of following like a holistically healthy lifestyle. On holistic health, another thing that I've been doing is using wellness tips that appear in the Samsung Health app. I use the Samsung Health app every single day to track my sleep and energy scores. I wasn't sure if I would keep tracking my sleep in the newborn phase, but when I have a good night and I see that on here, it feels incredible. These wellness tips really emphasize holistic health, physical activity and diet and sleep, how these three things are interconnected and how working on one can help you improve the other. As you guys might no, I've been working with Samsung Health for a while now on their sleep features and they've actually sponsored this video which I'm very grateful for their support during this time. But the wellness tips are new so I've been using those recently. I really appreciate the holistic health focus because when my sleep isn't good I can think about my nutrition or go for a walk and I also know that those other areas of my life also benefit my overall wellness. So I asked this question at the beginning of the video, can this research change how I feel? And what has become clear to me after weeks of following this sleep deprivation daily routine is that mindset is really, really important. So thinking that all of these research tips will make me feel better can have a placebo effect of actually making me feel better. And you know what? I'm here to take the placebo in this case. But what following all of these tips has done for me is actually given my day some kind of structure that I can focus on rather than focusing on how sleep deprived I am. And in doing all of these things, I do have a routine, which is really, really important. Having a consistent daily routine is one of the most important wellness tips out there. My baby has like 10 naps a day. I think at that point it's just their sleep. <laughs>